All right. So now that we have the intros out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with our first topic. Okay. So our first topic is getting into the game industry. Yes. Yes. The game industry. Not not rum. Wrath. Wrath. No, I, not yeah. rum. Rum is good, but getting into the game industry. Right. We may already know where the rum has gone, but where where do we go to get into the game industry? Right. Well, um, first things first, um, a lot of the developers that listen to us are solo indie devs, uh, maybe work with one or two teams for a collab project or for a solo, you know, for a game jam project, right. something like that. But uh, there's there's a, the ball, the ball, the game changes when you're trying to get into the industry as a developer for a, a bigger company. Yes. So there are certain things that the uh, the big game dev companies are looking for. Right, let's go ahead and bring that window up. Okay. All right, so this is an article here on uh, Insight, uh, Dice, it's on Dice, uh, which is, uh, if you don't know, it's a hiring company uh, that works uh, better than Monster Board. Oh, much better than a Monster lot Board. of things are better than Monster Board at but, least uh, this time. Yeah, but this is a this is a pretty good article because what it does is it kind of breaks down exactly what the industry looks for in people. Now, why is this relevant for someone who is an indie dev? Well, skill sets are something that you're going to grow your entire life. Yeah. Your career from start to finish, you're going to be doing a bunch of different things. You're going to uh, sometimes be a main developer. You're going to sometimes be a programmer. You're going to sometimes be an, uh, an artist, a texture artist. Those are two different things. Uh, sometimes a modeler, an animator, etc. So it's good to know what skill sets are relevant in the game industry, even if you are never going to find or look for a job in the industry at all. Because um, you need to have multiple hats. Yes, you do. You want to stay relevant. Exactly. And that means keeping up with the technology as well as the skill set. So let's just kind of take a look here at the meat of this article, and then let's just talk about it. So what do game dev companies want? Well, it actually gives a pretty good uh, breakdown right here that um, any type of information technology, computer science, computer programming degree is sort of a foot in the door, but we're talking about skill sets here. And the big one, unsurprisingly, is some level of software engineering mm -hmm. or programming. Yeah. Data analysis, software design, etc. Yeah. And, you know, when I say that, a lot of people, especially non-programmers, get really turned off. They're like, oh God, I got to learn programming. Well, the fact is, and we're always talking about this. Yeah. We're always talking about this, Teal, that if you're going to be a game developer, you have to at least understand the basics of programming. You don't have to know the syntax for every single language. I don't know the syntax for anything really outside of like basic C. Right. Um, you know, DirectX library was my best friend. But I mean, that's, that's kind of it, you know, um, but you have to know the basics. You have to know what programming is, what the difference between a method and a variable, which are not the same thing, uh, what the difference between a class is. You got to mm -hmm. know all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to be up on the terminology. And uh, honestly, this helps you to understand the, uh, the, the backbone of what drives all the engines. Right. I mean, you're going to be working in engines, uh, Unreal, Unity, Godot, whatever, but you need to understand how they work. Right, and even if you work for a super friendly, low-level programming engine, like the RPG Maker engine, mm -hmm. you're going to want to have a knowledge of, of JavaScript, because yeah. that's what is underneath the hood. Jason. Jason. Right. Jason. Jason. Uh, Jason. You're going to want to know all that. So first off, let's just, let's just say it. If you're going to be a serious developer, um, get rid of the fear of programming and learn the basics of software development. Just the basics. Yeah. You know, learn how it works. Um, and that way, if you decide that you do want to work in the industry in any way, shape, or form, you suddenly become that much more marketable. Right. Um, actually, you, you, you understand how it works. You, you become marketable, period. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of places, if you don't even know how coding works, even if you're not a coder, they unless you're a straight-up artist, they probably won't even look at you. Right. Um, yeah. What is Raf saying? Uh, Raf said that um, they applied for a job at Rockstar North last nice. year. Uh, then get it, but um, Brass says these places do post job listings, right? And they do, they do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, good, good luck with that. Uh, Rath, I hope you do get a job working in the industry sometime, um, because they're posting all the time. 
Um, and, and, and look at what they're posting. Yeah. That that will give you a clue as to what is being looked for. Bit, little, little, little interesting secret, sort of the dirty secret of game development that actually follows the film industry really closely. Oh, yeah. Um, whenever a project starts, whether it be a new game, a new IP, um, a new whatever, they usually hire a team just for that project. And generally speaking, although not always, that team works for the length of that project. Some are mm -hmm. brought back on, uh, some are let go afterwards. And mm -hmm. the reason I mention the film industry is it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, if a movie is being made by a studio, they may be bring back like their gaffers that are really well known, their assistant directors, you know, mm -hmm. um, first, second, third unit, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, the basic staff is, is rotated. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, so it's the same way in the game development industry for the most part. Um, now, if you get hired on full time to a studio and you work for that studio, then you'll be moved from project to project to project. Right. So, it's all project driven. Right. It's all project driven. So if you get hired on to a studio, uh, do check to see whether or not they're hiring you on for a game project in, in particular, mm -hmm. or if they're hiring you on to the studio full time. Yeah. Uh, yes, Brath. Yeah, 3D modelers. Those mm -hmm. jobs come out a lot. Um, yeah. The 3D modelers, animators, riggers, QA all the time, which is your best way to get into the industry. Is QA. Is yeah. QA. Uh, all right. So So we, let's let's go on in, in the article. Right. So the, the second biggest one also, and it's mentioned here, um, is UX design. Oh, There's yeah. There's a massive need for people to be good at UX design. And then you, from that, you'll go into your art which like Rath is talking about 3D modelers, et cetera, yeah. pixel artists for 2D games. So uh, really honestly, if you're wanting to get into the industry or if you're wanting to bone up on a skill set that is very in industry relevant, mm -hmm. start with some level of programming, then go into UX and uh, we actually just did a podcast on that. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. And then look into art, look into various types of art. And it doesn't have to be, you know, hand-drawn art. It can be pixel art. It can be, mm -hmm. um, uh, modeling, 3D modeling, rigging, 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 rigging yeah. weight painting, screw weight painting, screw weight painting yeah. so much. <laughs> but it's necessary, it's good, yeah. animating, that kind of thing. And those are going to be the big ones that are going to bring you out. If you're looking to get in as a writer, uh, you better be a really good writer. Um, it helps to have something published, but it also helps to just have a fantastic portfolio. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to get into level design, uh, have, a, have an online portfolio with amazing levels that you made in the relevant engines you want to work in. Right. Don't try to get a job for a company that uses the Unreal Engine if you're programming in Game Maker Studio. Yeah. You know, so if you want to be a level designer, massive amount of levels on your portfolio. You want to be an artist, massive amount of art on your portfolio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, this article does go along pretty deep into things. Uh, talks about the, the hiring process itself. Um, that's going to be different for every single company. Yeah, yeah, every company is going to approach it a little differently. Um, some focus on the uh, front end yeah. of applicants, and others focus more on the, uh, the near the end of the process. Right. Uh, th what I mean by that is uh, those type of companies will bring in a whole big group, a coterie, mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, the coterie is broken up into smaller groups, and then uh, people start getting eliminated. Yeah. And so the real interviewing doesn't begin until uh, that that large group has been culled. And I, I have been there, and it is it is very impersonal if mm -hmm. you're part of the call. Yeah. I can tell you from first experience, if you get called, you get called, and sometimes it's pretty much you just call out names, and those names continue, and everyone else have a fantastic day. Yep. And it is very impersonal. Um, others are going to be more personal, where mm -hmm. they're going to call you in, they're going to sit you down and talk to you. The, usually the higher the level of the position, the more they're going to sit down and actually chat with you for a while. Yeah. And get to know you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you're lucky enough to be interviewing for a lead developer position, expect to be meeting with maybe a creative director or something similar, and possibly even just having lunch. Because they want to get to know the person and not mm -hmm. just the employee. Um, also, get ready to be tested. Not every company does this. Not every studio does this. Uh, one of the ones that I worked for did not. One of the ones that I did did. So be prepared. Yeah. You know, if you have on your resume, I know this. I know this skill set. I've done these things. Here's my portfolio. Look at me. I'm a fantastic level designer. They may sit you down and say, okay, do something in Unreal. Uh, you know, two hours to make whatever based off of this yeah. particular um, 
yeah. I don't know, list of list of requirements. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, make make a castle with uh, a tree growing out of the mill or something crazy like that. I don't know. But be prepared to do that. If you are going for programming, be prepared to take a programming test or something. Yeah. Be prepared for them to test your skills in real time and not hire you sight unseen. So... And a lot more companies are doing that. A yeah. lot more are testing because uh, they're tired of, of hiring people and the people don't have the skills. Right. Or they, because you can fake a portfolio. Mm -hmm. You can. You can take someone else's work, spin it as your own, pass it off as your own. That's scuzzy as hell. Don't do that. But you can. You can do it. And you can get away with it to the hiring process. They're going to know once they've hired you that you're full of BS. They're going to know real quick. And you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm. But a lot of places don't want to do that. A lot of places don't want to take that chance, so they're giving skill tests. Yeah. Also, and I think this is in every job, not just the game industry, be prepared to take some sort of psychological personality test, etc., to see how compatible you are with the workforce, the company, etc. Oh, they still do that, do they? They do. Ugh. They do. Back when I was applying for crap during the <laughs> pandemic's early stages, yeah. I had to take an exhaustive personality exam that reminded me so much of Myers-Briggs, I felt sick to my stomach. Yeah. I like Myers-Briggs, but it doesn't have its place in the hiring process. Yeah, it just does. Because it's long. And it, it, it's very long. Uh, BG uh, just found a site that sells songs you can use in games. Nice. $99 per song Not is nice. pretty pricey. Well, that is very, very pricey, BG. Would you like to uh, slap that sucker onto the chat? Maybe we can take a look at it if you'd like. Yeah, this, it, but where's the, the... Yeah, get a link. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the long exams and hiring. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even for something in the game industry. It was something software IT related. Mm -hmm. And the test took four hours. I was allowed to take breaks because it was online. But yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. Was horrible. I ended up not getting that job because apparently everybody wanted the job at the time. <laughs> Amazing what the pandemic did. <laughs>